along. Welcome to Stingray Toms, Florida, and another dip into the archive. Today I'm sharing one of the many recordings in the archive, this one from 60 years ago. It's excerpts of the live recordings made during the space flight of Air Force Captain and NASA astronaut Wally Schirra, the fifth American human into space and the third to achieve orbit. The recording comes from this vinyl record, a 7-inch record released at the end of 1962. While most 7-inch records play at 45 RPMs, revolutions per minute, this one runs at 33 and a third RPM. This gives it a length of over 13 minutes. In a moment I'll play both sides while showing images from the archive. It contains live audio between Shira in the Sigma 7 capsule and flight control. It also includes narration by Lieutenant Colonel John Powers in Mercury Control. Powers was the public affairs officer for NASA during Project Mercury and became known as the voice of the astronauts. I don't want to go into the history of Mercury Project here since there's many other useful sources for it. The early space flights from Cape Canaveral are an important part of the history of the U.S. and yes, of Florida's tourism history. Wally Shiraz's first trip into space on October 3, 1962 took place a little over a year before the assassination of President John Kennedy. President Lyndon Johnson would name the new civilian space launch facility John F. Kennedy Space Center on November 29, 1963, just seven days after the assassination. Three weeks before the Shiraz flight, he served as President Kennedy's tour guide on his final visit to Cape Canaveral as part of his two-day whirlwind tour of space facilities that also included his famous We Choose to Go to the Moon speech at Rice University in Houston. Shira would say about naming his capsule, I named my spacecraft Sigma-7. Sigma, a Greek symbol for the sum of the elements of an equation, stands for engineering excellence. That was my goal. I would not settle for less. Sigma means sum of, a mathematical term. I wanted to get off the gee whiz names and use a technical test pilot term as well as acknowledge the original seven. I settled on Sigma because the flight was the sum of the efforts and energies of a lot of people. This is Mercury Control. The time is 7.10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The countdown for the MA-8 launch is now at T minus five minutes and counting. T minus five minutes and counting. All elements of the MA-8 mission at this time are in a go condition. This is Mercury Control. This is Mercury Control. The count is T minus 30 seconds and counting. Mercury Control, the count is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, liftoff. Pilot confirms his instrument indications telling the 
escape tower has been jettisoned. All indications here at Mercury Control tell us that the flight is proceeding satisfactorily. The trajectory is A-OK. -okay. Walter Shavar reports all systems on board are green and go. This is Mercury Control. The Sigma 7 spacecraft made contact with our Zanzibar Africa tracking station at 46 minutes after the hour. That's 7.46 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. He is in voice contact with the station at Zanzibar at this time. He has been working on his suit temperature control and has just advised the Zanzibar station that as far as he's concerned, everything is green on board the Sigma 7 spacecraft, indicating that he feels the mission is proceeding satisfactorily. He is, however, working on the suit temperature control. He indicates he's feeling quite comfortable, a little warm, but quite comfortable. This is Mercury Control. The time here at Cape Canaveral is 9.50 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Sigma 7 spacecraft made contact with our tracking station at Mushay, Australia, at 9.39 a.m. And at that time, uh, astronaut Wally Chirot advised the controller at Mushay that all of his systems on board were green, as he put it. And at that time, he was also advised by the controller at Mushay that the people of Perth, Australia, had turned on the city lights again, and he was asked if he could see them. This is Mercury Control. The Cygnus 7 spacecraft is now flying high over the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and the west coast of the United States. Uh, would you push your uh, uh, blood pressure stop button line? Okay. Yeah, yeah. oh, I almost forgot. A little hot from Hawaii. This is Mercury Control. The Sigma 7 spacecraft was in contact with our California tracking station at 14 minutes after the hour. During the contact between astronaut Shira and astronaut John Glenn, who is the controller at the California station, Shira advised that he had a delightful report for John Glenn. And a Good boy. Incidentally, you have a go for the next orbit in case you were wondering. Uh, Keith concurs with that one. Uh, your retro sequence time for 4 1 is 0 4 3 2 3 6. And uh, Keith advises just proceed with normal flight plan. Looks like things are going fine. Astronaut Wally Shira has had the Sigma 7 spacecraft in drifting flight. He reported to the Mouche controller that his instruments indicate that he has 90% of his fuel supply, both automatic and manual. And this supply demonstrates some rather excellent fuel system management. He also reported that he's, he has the suit temperature situation well under control and that he is very comfortable. One other very interesting fact has been reported to us in the last few minutes, and that is a report from the Indian Ocean ship down off the Straits of Madagascar. They indicate that they made a visual sighting of the Sigma 7 spacecraft as it passed over, they had it in sight for approximately five minutes. They report that it appeared to be almost as bright as the star of Venus. During the pass over the Cape Canaveral area by the Sigma 7 and astronaut Wally Shira, the voice contact was made initially with Capcom, astronaut Deke Slayton, as is normal. But then after a short exchange, our flight director named Christopher Columbus Kraft got an opportunity for the first time in our program to go direct into air ground voice communication with the pilot. The exchange between the two was uh, very friendly and very constructive. For your information, uh, we're going to start calling you Venus. Uh, IOS uh, visually sighted you on the last pass. How about that? Flight would like to talk to you now. Okay. Wally, uh, we have some echo sighting data. You prepared to copy? Just give me a third boy. Stand by. That should be fun, shouldn't it? Roger. Doing a real good show up there, and I think we're proving our point, old buddy. I hope so, Chris. I'm enjoying it. Uh, Sigma 7, Cape Flight. Okay, Flight. Uh, we're ready to go into fast time, if you are. <laughs> this is Mercury Control. Sigma 7 is flying over the South Atlantic toward the tip, southern tip of the African continent at this time. We have no voice contact with astronaut Shira at this time but expect to have contact shortly through the Indian Ocean tracking ship. Thus far in the flight, 
Shiva has exercised all attitude control modes satisfactorily. He has also flown extended periods of drifting flight. According to his reports, he has not been able to detect any firm pattern of attitude changing motions during the drifting flight. He has also reported that he ate some of his cubed space age food and he ate some strange peaches, which he squeezed out of a toothpaste-like tube. This is Mercury Control. Roger, very good. Uh, remember to uh, close your faceplate at this time. Remember also uh, to avoid prior to re-entry. Is there anything else uh, we can do for you at this time? Roger, face plate is closed, and uh, everything looks real good, Scott. Looks real good down here, Wally. Doing a good job, and I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, shortly out midway way. Roger. We'll this is Mercury Control. Sigma-7 spacecraft is now traveling across the South Atlantic Ocean, heading toward the Af southern tip of the African continent. On this sixth orbit, Cutting across South America and down across the South Atlantic, uh, astronaut Wally Shira is essentially out of communication with all the tracking network and with us. We expect him to be in contact with the Indian Ocean ship within a matter of about seven or eight minutes. At that time, we will be able to confirm his condition and the status of the mission. All seven, are you reading me? I understand you're ready to go home, Wally. Very good. You're going to use uh, ASCS uh, retro and a manual proportional standby. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Retro sequence. We can confirm on TM, retro 1, 2, and 3, attitude holding very well. Uh, retro jettison switch to arm. This is Mercury Control. All indications tell us that the attitude was as it should have been. We now estimate that the ionization layer, which would blank out his communications, will occur in approximately one minute. The ionization layer builds up as the spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere and blocks out radio communications.
out of the water. All sections of the ship line by men. Now the capsule with a location gear below it. Now the capsule is probably around 30 feet out of the water and practically on a level with the platform. Now a little higher. And now three sailors reach out and start to pull as they're joined by others, direct and guide the spacecraft. And there goes the hatch, it's just been blown. And we're waiting to catch a glimpse of the astronaut. There comes the, he is out now, still wearing his helmet. Some applause for the men in the main vicinity. Now he removes his helmet. And as somebody off to his right, he's now seated with his legs inside the capsule. Seated on wings off to the right and start to pull his legs out. Command us. Standing now in the window section. And looking down, now looking at the top of his capsule. He's now down on the deck. The astronaut, for all appearances, is in good shape. The capsule is in good shape. Herbert Chaplow aboard the aircraft carrier Kearsarge in the Pacific. Wally Shira would say, Feeling weightless, it's so many things together. A feeling of pride, of healthy solitude, of dignified freedom from everything that's dirty, sticky. You feel exquisitely comfortable, and you feel you have so much energy, such an urge to do things, such an ability to do things. And you work well, yes, you think well, without sweat, without difficulty. Thank you for watching another of my videos. If you learned something, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Florida tourism history. Stingray Tom's Florida, traveling through time around the Sunshine State.